What's your well, take on the Scottish government's further tightening of restrictions? Oh, goodness me, what a question. Uh, I'm bitterly disappointed on behalf of the, the businesses that it's going to further cripple and hobble, if not put out of business once and for all. Uh, based on watching uh, First Minister Nicola Sturgeon's b operation over the last couple of years, it comes as absolutely no surprise. Uh, I, I remain convinced, as I have been almost from the beginning, that this is a level of power uh, over people's lives that Nicola Sturgeon would not have acquired any other way, and that now that she has it tucked under her belt, she's uh, you know resolutely determined to wring every last drop out of that unnecessary... Uh, ill-gained power over people's lives. It, it surprises me not a jot that she's done this, but it will be a disaster for businesses. Uh, it's a further uh, discouragement. Uh, it, it casts a further uh, pall of depression over the sectors that so needed uh, a boost. You know, that, that, that Kate Forbes was talking there about this being the best thing to protect business. The best thing for business in Scotland as elsewhere is for the government to get out of businesses' faces and let businesses conduct business and try and recover some of the financial losses that they've had to absorb over the last 20-odd months. I want to make one thing crystal clear before, before we progress on to some of those points of detail, because you and I have, have discussed this. We haven't always agreed, um, which is good, and we both enjoy that and we both celebrate it. But for you, this is as much a point of principle as it is about science and medicine, isn't it? Yes, because I, I don't have the, the scientific background or the, or the, or the medical nous. I, you know, I read as, as much as I can and, and I understand what I do, but I, I don't claim to come at this from, from either of those perspectives. I, I come at it from a, from a, a moral standpoint, from a, 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 from a humane uh, standpoint. And, and I, I look around me at the, at the damage that's being done emotionally and materially and financially. To the, to the private sector, to the businesses, the shops, the, 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 the pubs and clubs and cafes and restaurants around me, just within you know, a, a couple of miles radius from where I'm sitting right now. And, and I can see the harm, uh, the harm that's being done. I don't accept that there's a, a scientific or a medical justification for continuing to apply these restrictions. I simply don't. Now, and I, I've already said with a caveat that I'm, you know, I, I don't have the, the medical or the scientific background, but I think it's, it, it, it's fairly evident that lockdown, and I'm using that as an umbrella term for all of the restrictions, you know, whatever from that lucky bag of, of miseries that's, that's doled out to the people over the last 20 odd months, they haven't worked. They have not done anything. They haven't reduced the spread. They haven't reduced the number of you know you know people contracting uh, COVID and any of its its variants. Uh, you know th these restrictions are just disastrous. They're just heaping misery on misery, and it's high time, at least in England, in the short term. The, the, you know the government seemed to have understood that there, but in Scotland, in Wales, and in Northern Ireland. The, the governments, the assemblies are still up in the faces of business, and that is to the detriment of all. I was with you in the analysis, although, as I say, we have disagreed in nuances of it over the past, until you got to the point saying that none of them have had any impact at all on first wave, second wave. Whenever restrictions have been introduced and jabs have come in and taken off and boosters have been given, the numbers of infections in the first part of it declined, not now with Omicron, I completely accept that, hospitalizations declined and deaths declined. I can understand your principal disagreement with it, but the statistics are there for all to see, Neil. Well, the, 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 the rollout of vaccination also coincided with the, the, the natural progression from winter into spring and into summer, when you, know, you, you would expect the number of people who were ill or hospitalized with respiratory infections of any sort to decline anyway. You know, the, the timing was very fortuitous. Uh, you, would, you would expect people to be in better health in the spring and in the summer. Uh, you know, as we, as we came into this winter and approaching this Christmas, you know, oh, lo and behold, you know, like a, like, a, like a gift to those politicians obsessed with power, uh, they, they found somewhere this, this Omicron variant and managed to get terribly excited and upset about it when much of the scientific opinion coming out of South Africa and elsewhere was saying 
we've had this and seen this for longer than you. We think it's mild. We th there, there, were, uh, there were specialists saying that it might be just the ticket to let as many people as possible have a brush with Omicron to recover naturally from a mild uh, illness and then have natural immunity, which, you know, all of the immunology textbooks for, you know, for decades have said is the, is the gold standard of protection. Uh, but there was a, a, there was a, you know, there was a concerted attempt made uh, to, to see Omicron only as a bad thing. Uh, because yet again, there, there was just this general determination to, you know, to hang the sword of Damocles over everybody's heads. I, I just think it's been the wrong way to go about it. And the, the collateral damage, when all is said and done, and we look back on this from whatever point in the future, at what was ha at what happened and what was done, I think this will be, the, the, in the in the final analysis, it will have been the mother and father of all public policy disasters. Lockdown and and all its little wizards will have will be seen to have done nothing but harm. Finally, I know you keep a very keen and learned eye on on much greater thoughts such as as, as philosophy and as you were saying the morality of it all. But back to the grubby business of pure politics. Do you think that sword of Damocles is also hanging over Nicola Surgeon and her SNP in the political arena, in the sense of going forward to the next elections uh, and even the possibility of yet another referendum? How much trouble do you judge her to be in? Oh, um, well, it, how much trouble is she in? That's hard to tell because there's a supine media up here that aids and abets you know, every bad decision that she makes. Uh, there, there hasn't been much in the way of meaningful political opposition to her. However, if you're asking me, I would say independence is is a is a is a prospect of the distant past. Uh, its high water mark was in 2016. It's been any appetite for it has been in decline ever since. I don't take indie ref to or or whatever you might want to call it as any kind of realistic possibility, far less a threat. I think that underscores why Nicola Sturgeon's behaving the way that she's doing, because this is the fantasy that she's got at the moment, as someone like Nicola Sturgeon dreams of having control over people's lives. She calls herself Chief Mammy. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a fantasy for her to, you know, to have people looking to her for permission to go about their everyday lives. But the dream of independence for the SNP and their political supporters is, is the stuff of yesteryear. It's gone. It's not realistic. And it's partly for that reason that Nicola Sturgeon, like Mark Drakeford in Wales, she cannot bear to surrender, to hand over the power that, that she was granted, gifted on account of this unprecedented, unexpected emergency. But, you know, independence is gone. That, 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 that move has gone. It's not a realistic threat. I don't, I don't, I'm not worried about it, and I haven't been worried about it for some considerable time. That possibility is no more. I don't expect to talk meaningfully about the prospect of a referendum on independence for decades, if, I, if at all again in my lifetime.